It actually happened on my wedding day. I was like walking away from, from the altar with my now wife. Looked her in the eyes and I just thought like, and I just thought like, what the fuck would I do if you died? Like not not mm. in a weird way, not, not in a bad way, but when you make that commitment to a person, like really, really do it, it changes everything about you and everything in your brain. And, and that was like a fear that just came to me. Like you're so important now, what the fuck would I do if, if, you, if you died, yeah. what would I do? Welcome to Amigos PC. If you were looking for a podcast with high standards and an appreciation for the finer things in life, like water polo, ballet, equestrian riding, cricket, and trips to the countryside, uh, you're in the wrong place. If you're looking for a podcast that celebrates drinking... Random thoughts, wacky conspiracies, memes, crypto, cinema, and a lot of other things that don't really make any sense, then you're in the right place. This is Amigos PC, and here are your hosts, Scott and Mark. All right, the Amigos back at it again uh, with a special guest today, Joshua Schubert. Uh, he is Frank in the Tick series, also has the series that he's uh, promoting right now, uh, After, uh, which you can find on his IMDb page. Uh, Josh, if you could, uh, thanks for coming on, uh, and then maybe uh, give us a little bit of your background. Sure. Um, sure. Uh, so, hey, everybody. My name is Joshua Schubart. Um, I'm an actor, writer, producer, model, and I do all my own stunt work. Um, and I also recently got into audiobooking, so I do a ton of audiobooks, which is fun, too. Uh, but acting since I was 14 years old, I'm married. I uh, just had a baby girl two weeks ago. Well, not not me. My <laughs> wife had, had her, and... I was just it is in the 2021. Room. You never know. Yeah, you, you never, never know. know. <laughs> um, and that's kind of the quick hello me time. And, uh, oh, and okay. I'm also a Libra. Thanks. I think you're oh, probably the first yeah. guest we've had yeah, that no. went into their uh, actual horoscope. <laughs> their <they're, they're laughs> signs. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> I'm a Leo. No. I'm just... What else do you like? Like walks on the beach or what? Hang I on. love long walks on the beach and who doesn't? Uh, whiskey on the rocks and oh, nice. Uh, like kind of uh, odd. Fairy tale stories. I, I don't know things. Things. Nice, <laughs> nice. Yeah. Well, congrats on the baby. By the Thank way. you. Her her name is Fitz. I love her oh. very much. Did, did you? Like the name. Is, is she named Thank after you. someone specific, or is it? Is it do do? No, we just like the name. Uh, we like the name Fitzgerald, but it's normally like a last last name, and it's usually pretty masculine or whatever. So we were just like, let's just call her Fitz because it's an interesting name and honestly we just were like that's a cool name and it, and, and 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 it'll make her a really cool awesome person probably well it's so, a unique yeah. guy too fingers fingers <laughs> yeah fingers crossed fingers crossed <laughs> fingers crossed yeah Whole, maybe yeah. she won't be weird. It'll be great. But yeah, well, but, uh, yeah. I mean, yeah. with today's society and things like that, I, I think weird is like the new cool. So I, it might be good that, that she, is cool, you know, yeah. comes or is is unique. I guess. You... Well, yeah. I mean, I'm pretty <laughs> weird. So I mean, the apple is not going to fall far from the tree there. So <laughs> yeah. So let's jump into to after we watched it, we enjoyed it, both cool. of us. Like we were, we were one more, which hopefully there is going to be more. Uh, tell us a little bit too. about it. What kind of maybe, was there some inspiration behind it? Anything? Well, not. I mean, obviously, when people watch it, they'll know. Maybe there yeah. wasn't in. Well, hopefully, but like no, yeah. What so made you I write actually, that or come to that. All right. So it actually happened on my wedding day. Believe it or not. Um, I, I had just said I do, and I was like walking away from, from the altar with, with my now wife, and I looked her in the eyes, and I just thought like, can I yep, absolutely. curse on your show or not? All of them, whatever you oh, want. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah, please do. And, awesome, cool, fuck. <laughs> please do. And, um, <laughs> and I just thought like, what the fuck would I do if you died? Like, not, not mm. in a weird way, not, not in a bad way, but when you get married, um, you can talk a lot of shit about getting married or like being with a person or whatever but when you make that commitment to a person like really really do it 
it changes everything about you and everything in your brain and um and that was like a fear that just came to me like you're so important now what the fuck would i do if you, if you die yeah. what would i do um and uh it it just kind of like was in my head for a while to the point where i was like shit i probably have to write this down so it is out of my head um so i began to write it in like a pretty basic way where i just kind of like wrote down bits of scenes and like what would make me like really uh like really really sad about that type of situation and then it morphed its way into um what it is today uh because i made it i i made after for three reasons um one is because of that thought that that popped into my head two is um men large men uh like like me um yeah. are off, yeah. off the panel here yeah are <laughs> You know, in entertainment, we are generally oafish, idiots, or ultra-violent, and we're not allowed to go through a full spectrum of emotion or to uh, battle with me like mental health issues. And what I wanted to do was show guys like us being humans, going through loss, being in love, and then coming out the other side, not perfect, but better, because that's really important when it comes to, to this type of uh, material or having a conversation about it. Um, and then, so that that was actually two and three. It was like large dudes need are also people too, and right. the mental health part of it, which is also really important for men. Yeah, no, I, I definitely found myself you know, I'm relating well throughout the whole thing as far as like everything you go through, I can see myself because I'm married, I've been married for eleven years and cool. I can see kind of the the whole what you go through and, and the same kind of thought process and what would happen and and this and that. So I definitely it was definitely awesomely done for sure. Thanks, man. So so far I'm sure you're gonna go more onto it, hopefully in amazing I think. Thanks. Thank, thank you. Yeah. I'm really, yeah, really I was actually thrown off right at the beginning. Um, I, I kind of knew a little bit about it uh, when when we first started talking and and, and um, you know scheduling to get this uh, episode to happen, and uh, you know what the topic was about or what it was about a little bit after looking and researching. And then when I started actually watching it, I, I still was kind of thrown off because this is a it's a very serious topic as to what it it. Uh, addresses right away um and, and to find right. out that that like you use that off of like a personal not so much an experience but like a, a something you thought of like oh my god like because you, you do go through yeah. that when you're you know you're in love with someone uh and you think about that like you think of those you think of those yeah yeah what ifs or you know what i mean like or what, yeah. what could happen kind of thing yeah no i get it for sure yeah i mean and it also comes comes from like part of my own personal history with my my own mental health issues and my experience with mental health in my entire life with like other people in my life so i i just wanted to kind of begin a positive conversation as as opposed to what it usually is which is like you're mentally ill it's bad you're gonna be in an asylum and you're gonna die and you're gonna just poop yourself forever till 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 you're dead but yeah but yeah i did i liked also uh not to like give any spoilers on it for anybody that ends up you know watching it after uh this this drops but i did like the aspect of uh you started to get your feet wet again uh as a character and then you're you're also you're addressing this mental health issue and uh the trauma that he went through right your character went through uh right. And giving it like it, it's the, like the show's not a comedy, but it, it you gave it like a little spin here and there. It, like to there, me, there well, these little me, parts where you're like, comedy aspect. <laughs> you know, it, it made you laugh just because of some of the things that were going on. Uh huh. Well, yeah. That, yeah. that was on purpose, right? So it's a dramedy, and what I wanted to do with it was I wanted it to feel like life in a way, like. Life is messy, it's sad, but can also be hilariously funny, and things that 
may not be n normally like really really funny become that way when you're in these ridiculous type of awful fucking circumstances um and it's 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 all you know it's all shitty and weird and awesome and magical and beautiful and huge and that's what life is and that's what i wanted to do with after and i think it worked i think that's what we were able to do with it so it's yeah cool. no it, it was awesome the one thing that i'm i took from a, for sure that i'm gonna practice is the heart attack <laughs> that i that, that i took from it. that to me that was like oh my god like i have to try that that's like that's oh, like, a, like a you have to everyone has to work that through for sure so i literally that. that is pulled right from my relationship i do that to my <laughs> wife all the time um, I think I think of it as like a like a relationship trust fall. Yeah. So if, that... <laughs> so for like anyone who hasn't watched watched the show yet, basically <laughs> what it is is you pretend that you have a heart attack while you're in the middle of sex and you just fall limp on <laughs> top of your partner, and then they have to try to push you off of them. Um, it sounds it sounds crazy and it kind of is, but it. When you watch it, or when you, it, it's it's a really hilarious moment uh, in in the show. But my wife hates it. So, so that, that that's definitely what you practice. You do do that. Then that's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, that, that brings up a question too. Because um, you, you know you had this thought to create this after you sh you got married shortly after, uh, and then. You, you, you're telling about the some of these experiences that we see in the show that you actually are, are practicing in real life. So what was your wife's thought uh, when you showed her or, or told her about this idea with the show and, and what was her reaction? Well, I mean, she was supportive of it. I it's it's not an exact copy yeah. of our marriage. It's, it's just that like <laughs> things were pulled like you know, like trying to keep things authentic to life um, as much as you can, you do pull from personal experiences. Um, so there, there are a couple of moments like that one, and then uh, there's another moment where um, they're talking about whether or not they want to have sex, but then they watch t t t t Top Chef instead. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. There's, there's just like little moments like that that you can pull from from life, and they feel real both out here in the world and when it's on your TV screen. So those those are important to highlight because it makes everything feel more real. Like, like especially with people that know what that type of yeah. thing is. Um, but with um, with the marriage in the in the show itself part of it was that um, it was this idealized version of their relationship that was being played back in the main character's head so like nobody's relationship is that perfect right but like when you go back when you're experiencing some type of awful loss or you're going through incredible grief nobody remembers any of the bad parts anymore it's only all the positive parts mm -hmm. and that's what we were trying to highlight is that like he's going back to these quote unquote perfect moments other than the one in the in the beginning you know which is the which is like what's the crux of the show is like kind of like built on um right is and what I'd like to play with in season two, if we're allowed to have one, is we've seen that, and then now that he's healing and he's changing, we're going to have a look back at what it was actually like during their relationship. Not that it was terrible, but that it wasn't a perfect thing, because nothing ever is. Um, yeah. So, I like that. Yeah, that'd me too. So I hope we get to do it. <laughs> yeah, no, that'd be awesome, because then, cause then you have... Then you have basically your like you're now into your your you know the, the next chapter, and then you, you kind of work through the bad stuff that you had with the next chapter, right? And it kind of helps you figure it out going forward. That'd be really good, yeah, for sure. It's awesome. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Yeah, I, I definitely hope. Uh, and me and Mark talked about this beforehand. We were like, you know, oh man, like we we need more. 
Like honestly, like we were like, I'm not, not I mean, like it was so good. Like I was like, this should be more. Thank you. So I hope there. It, for it sure, seemed like too in, in the series, it, it wasn't just uh, you uh, and, and uh, grieving through uh, your, your spouse passing uh, in, in the series. It, it, you also showed. Uh, dynamic between friends right like it like that yeah. was mm-hmm. I, I really actually enjoyed that a lot just because it, it reminds me a little bit of like me and scott you know we, we've been friends forever and it, a little bit a little bit yeah the shower I, scene well, I kind of. <laughs> we're not there we're not there yet well we're remember i shaved your back that one time <laughs> <laughs> that one time, no, but, but I was it wearing did. It, it opened up a dynamic, or it showed me a dynamic. Like, okay, like, it, this is. Yeah. I, I don't know if you're taking it from like personal experiences, but it, it just it seemed like okay, you know, that this is. One of the things that I really try and do is when I write, I try and write positive male intimacy that is non-sexual. Wow. Oh, um, just because except, except for except for the showers well except when it will be sexual but like so like men are allowed to have intimate relationships with each other like right. we're allowed to t- tell each other that you know that we fucking love each other and we can hug each other mm-hmm. and we can go through life together in a really real way and Agreed. in tv shows and movies you know it's normally just like some toxic ass shit where it's like you're being a pussy bro you gotta fucking yeah. pull your balls out yeah. and you're, put them over your head and be a fucking man and it's like that's not true, what true. fucking life is supposed to be <laughs> so you're right um, oh, yeah. so that's one of the things that I try to do too is just show that like men are multi-dimensional also um, and we don't have to be like macho t- toxicity factories we can be here in the world we can be present too we don't have to be this specific binary thing yeah you know? yeah no yeah you definitely nailed it for sure was awesome. i love a bromance <laughs> guys <It's>, uh, <laughs> i love that stuff yeah it's awesome what what where where did like the passion start with uh, it, it, are you more uh, passionate about writing or is it is it everything that's in entertainment altogether because it, it seems like you do a, a lot of everything like you, you wrote this series created it right uh and and yeah so I, everything just kind of like came one after the other right so like i found acting first like i had just come off the streets being homeless and I had just gotten into foster care um, and my uh, new parents, they put me into Catholic school. (laughs) Um, So it was like a really weird time of no rules, no holds barred, trying to like eat and not die uh, into a house where I now had rules and they put me in Catholic school where it was insanely fucking structured. And I wasn't doing very well, guys. Like I was doing a lot of drugs, I was hanging out with all the wrong folks, I was like an after school special basically Um, and I also had a trauma induced speech impediment, Uh, I had a terrible fucking stutter and I could barely speak more than two or three words at a time in a row period Um, so so I'm in Catholic school, it's 10th grade um, high school and I don't know what the fuck I'm doing you know, no one does because we're 14 yeah. years old or whatever. You think you know um, everything, but, but you really know nothing. Right. You don't know right. anything. And um, I heard an announcement over the loudspeaker for the school play. And I was like, all right, I don't know what the fuck. Fuck it, let's just try that. Um, and I walked on stage and I could speak in complete sentences for the first time since I was like six years old. Uh, it was a wild experience. Um, and I knew from that moment, it like codified everything in my life. Like I knew like this, I need, I need to do this. Like it's a positive thing for me. Um, and that's what I knew I needed to do with the rest of my life. From that moment on, I just quit everything that was bad for me. Like I didn't do any drugs anymore. I didn't do any that shit. And I just kind of like uh-huh. tried to figure out how to do this. Like it's not like it was a perfect run. Like it's not like I was like right. perfect, but it, it put me on the path to change my life and as a result I found that and that opened me up and then um, I began to write in college just kind of like I, I took like a like a playwriting class and learned that I kind of like that too but I kind of put it on the back burner okay. a little bit 
Um, mm -hmm. And so I just went and then I went into a master's program and I started working and working and working. And the reason that I actually got into making my, my own content is because of what we were kind of talking about before, is that I wasn't playing the roles that I wanted to play. I'm very pleased with the with all all of my work and I'll, and I'll continue to work for the rest of my career, but I didn't get to play the complete human beings. And there were a couple of actors that were like cracking it open, like Chris Farley and John Candy and these other larger people that, while they were oafish and really funny, in the moments where they were able to be human beings, it was really special. It was really electrifying, yeah. in a way um, that you didn't really see before. And I was like, fuck, I need to, like, I want to do that. I think I have to write that for myself. So I began to write for myself and for other people that weren't playing the roles that they wanted to play either. So it's like everybody in, <clears throat> everybody in After, all, I wrote all those roles for every single person in the show uh, for, for them, which was really special and really cool. Um, and then also like, Modeling kind of happened by accident. Like I'm like a plus size model, um, and that got really cool. Be thank, thank you, by the way. <laughs> yeah, you give us hope. No, but but but, dude, like that was really cool because I was I'm a model for these brands, and then these brands t like t t told me that people would walk into their actual places with my print ad and they would point at me and they would go i want to look I like want josh this. i've <laughs> no but like i've never seen me before that could actually wear clothing like this and that was really important too and i didn't realize it at the time like i thought like modeling's f like dumb but it can actually help bring about positive change um Heck yeah so that's kind of like it's like everything happened by accident is kind of what I say, but it's just like everything, one thing leads to another inevitably. And when mm -hmm. you're working with agents and managers, they're just going to start to like push you at stuff and see Thanks. what works. Yeah. And it seems like everything <laughs> worked. So, you're enjoying everything. Yeah. Yeah, it's funny. clear too. You could see it uh, just even in, in this conversation, you're talking about it, you, you have the passion. Uh, it, it emanates I from your it, voice. Yeah. Uh, it, so, you know, are doing encompassing all of these, uh, and you brought up your path. Uh, in in reading some of your description, like you said, you were homeless. Like, like what what Ooh. was? Uh, I don't know exactly uh, what I'm trying to ask here, but it, with your past itself, like you have a story. Like a, a it's it's a pretty drastic story and change, and, and it set you on a path to you know where you're at now. Uh, is that something that uh, you thought about maybe um, writing or, or looking for a role that's kind of like that or, or related to it? Yeah, so I actually wrote a movie that has a bunch of those elements in it now that I'm working on getting made. But basically, like, I started to write, like, a life, like, a movie about my life or whatever. And even though my life is kind of, like melodramatic it did end up just turning into this like psychotic melodrama which while that's an interesting thing that people might want to see it's not a thing that I want to create I would rather bring in elements yeah. of it with some sort of comedy because that's a good way in for mm. people to understand what the actual thing is right like um so yeah, I mean, that's always going to be part of what I create. There's like always going to be a bunch, a bunch of dark, a bunch of darkness in there too. Um, but that's not necessarily bad. That just makes everything more real and well, well rounded. Yeah. And that's, that's what I said from after. I thought after had a lot of good, you know, darkness is not great. Not, you know what I mean? But it was, it was good dark humor in some parts where it was like, it was done really well i thought like it was i was able to see a lot of it that was a lot of lightness in the darkness you know what i mean like it, it was really good and done perfectly thank you I well because in the beginning yeah. when it was being pitched around um like uh, um ift n network ultimately are are the ones that that picked it up um but 
I was getting a lot of notes back about how, um, so my agent told me that normally if they don't want something, they don't say anything, they just say no, but I was getting no's with pages of notes about why they hate it, right? And it was all based around the mental health parts of the show, and basically it was like they were scared of what was going on. And I knew that going in, and my my team knew that going in. I mean, just, you know, so that the audience isn't confused anymore, and it's not really going to give anything away. I mean, it will, but it won't. But, um... When your main character tries to kill himself in the first episode, um, it's going to rattle people in a way that they may not have known that they could be rattled before. Um, especially yeah. when it's out of nowhere. Out of nowhere, quote unquote. You know, like, but that's how that shit happens. It just happens. It's triggered by something that's highly, highly, highly specific, and then all of a sudden you're dead, or you're almost dead. And. That's what right. I was trying to do with the show, too. And um, I'm happy that those people have had any type of any type of re re reaction to it because it means that it had an impact. It may not have been one that they wanted, but it had an oh, impact. Oh, yeah, it touched, it touched on them. It touched them because they know they knew something in their head that they knew that they, you were touching right. on something. Be possibly, like, so you had too real. There. And it was something. funny. It... it yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, that's that. That's what it is. It, you know, that's 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 life. Yeah. And then it's funny. And then you bring it to to the funny when you say, you know, you have the scene later on. You say suicide shit. Right. You know what I mean? And and I and I wrote that down, thinking that's hilarious. Like, you know, I was I was doing I was thinking about doing suicide shit. And I'm like, ah, it's, it's almost like something that you just, would just say though. That whole that is. Yeah. Like I, I was thinking about doing suicide shit. What What, what do you mean? Well, it's because, like, one of those things is, like, how the fuck do you talk about that, right? Like, what do you call it, yeah. and what do you... Yeah. And, like, if you're just having, like, a normal conversation with, like, your, like, best fucking buddy, you know, like... And yeah. it's kind of embarrassing, too, like, and you don't know how to really say yeah. it, so you're just, like, I'm just yeah. thinking about doing suicide shit, you know? Like, you don't... It's, like, and then it's, like, <laughs> what the fuck does that mean, dude? And it's, like, you know, I'm doing this and this That's and this and this, you know, but it's... Perfect. Yeah. So... Yeah. yeah. Perfectly written. That's like relatable. I mean, not relatable to me. But, well, you know what I mean? Like it's like how it literally happened for somebody to write that, or like in the real world. No, yeah, I mean, so I and that was amazing. That was that's awesome. that's the point is that for that type of content, like that type of idea, to be totally relatable to a person that maybe has never thought about that before, it's like it's like how do we make this more more normalized for folks so it's yeah. not. Yeah. So so that when they do talk about Scary. it, they're not like, like it's not like no, like you, no, it's bad. You're bad now. You're bad. You know, like people love you. Like yeah. that's that's not that's not the point. Like people want to yeah. speak to you about it because they don't know what the fuck's going on with them. And then when and then when you're like, no, you can't even say that out loud. Then it's like, all right, well, I guess I'll just go fucking kill myself now. <laughs> like, yeah, you know? yeah. Well, I guess I'll, yeah. yeah. I'll I'll finish yeah. it this time. <laughs> Well, That's awesome. Uh, if you don't mind, I'd, I'd like to also kind of just uh, jump on a couple of the other stuff that that, that we've seen. Uh, yeah, we can talk about whatever you um, like, man. Love it. One show that I'm a huge fan of, and, and uh, it, I, I don't think that they've renewed it uh, again, but is High Maintenance. Uh, you were... Yeah, so they are are no longer yeah. making it anymore. Uh, it, it, uh... It, it, it was a personal choice by the creators of the show to, to make other things. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, that that show, show was great. Your episode too is very... Uh, the one that you're in, uh, in season two, episode one, uh, is very unique. Uh, your character who is... is, yeah. is like something drastic happens uh, that this show, this episode premiered years ago. So if someone, spoiler alert, that, that's on you. <laughs> um, but it, it, essentially, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's an, you know, the, the, this particular episode, at least. Uh, it, something tragic or crazy happens in the episode. I, they kind of gloss over it, or from what I remember, at least. Uh, but your character, um, you, you're trying to celebrate, you were talking about big men earlier, right? You're, you're celebrating like weight loss in this, and, and you want to post it on social yeah. media, but you feel like a real dick doing it. 
and you're like because of what's going on in the environment around you uh, and, and and you experiencing everybody like i can't even do you know training today uh the one girl she walked out of a cycling class i can't believe you remember as much right. detail of this episode as i do um and then it ends well the, the entire, entire episode ends really weird too but um yeah w- with like a character like that it is like how I, are you discovering the roles like this or, or like you were saying earlier is your agent throwing it at you and then you're like reading the line to, to figure out if it's a character that you enjoy and want to pursue and it seems like a lot of your stuff too is based in 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 new york kind of um, it is yeah okay well, because well, that's where I live. Um, but this this one actually has a really cool fucking story too. So um, I used used to weigh four hundred pounds um, when I oh my god really? got you are when I got into foster care. I um, ate my ass off because I wasn't used to having food okay. around. So um, because of my food instability, I would just basically eat like an entire block of cheese from like Costco in a day um, because wow. um, and once I changed my relationship with food and what that meant and that I it, it was going to be around and stuff that I was able to like lose a bunch of the weight and I began exercising all that stuff but so what they were looking for for this episode was a person who used to be really heavy that had lost a bunch of weight and I said oh well that's that's me um, so <laughs> Um, I saw I I saw the role come up, and my manager put me in for it. And I went in for the audition, and they were like, "So they don't really have like a like a script for this character yet. Um, they they just kind of want you to like tell them your personal weight loss story, and then take your shirt off." <laughs> um, <laughs> nice. Uh, and then I was like, I want to be famous. Uh, but um, <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> How many tears? How many tears are running out when you're doing it? Six or seven. Yeah. Six tears. Um, <laughs> I want to be. Famous. So I told them my story about you know being homeless, blah blah, and what happened to me, and how I got so heavy, and um, then you know um, they cast me, and then uh, they wrote a lot of my dialogue based off of my interview that I gave and then when we were shooting I was able to like just improv a bunch of shit with with them and have a great great time but the overall premise was was locked in and what that was supposed to be um, for the show the really bad thing that happened was it was supposed to be the morning of uh, Trump getting elected yeah that's what it was in New York City yeah um, mm. and um, it was a really amazing thing to do because that's also a thing like men and weight weight issues and like body dysmorphia and all that stuff that men also go through that they never talk about it was really special for me to be able to do that and to move through that world um, and it was so well done too and um, it was just a wonderful like week and a half on set it was such a wonderful wonderful time um so yeah, that's that's what that's what that one. Is. And it, it, you go through uh, stages that's with awesome. that character too. I, the, the episodes are not that long, but like they showed a pretty good detail of like you, you know, I'm working out. Uh, oh no, man, I, you know, I just you, uh, you know, change, what you said earlier, you change your relationship with food, uh, and then uh, things happen, and you're not able to like share, you know, the progress that you're making. Like fuck it, I'm to get some I'm burger. Gonna cake, go back to food, everything. yeah. <laughs> and yeah. you just like <laughs> see this wide dynamic just happen, like an arc. Uh, it, uh, you would say it, it's just it was a great episode. Obviously, I, I remember it uh, probably because I relate. Uh, I I struggled with you know weight my entire uh, adulthood, I guess you could say, and 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 trying to get it under control now is just. Mark's, Mark's from Wisconsin. When you said eat a block of cheese, that was like everyone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Mark is like done. Mark's yeah. like done. Oh no, Mark's frozen. Oh, oh he's Mark. frozen. Oh no, Jeez. cheese. He's stuck, he's stuck on, on cheese. cheese. Oh, he loves it. <laughs> All right, jumping back into after talking about Mark's cheese fetish. Um, so, what role? I, I know I, you know, researching you and and looking that you you'd want to do some do. Marvel stuff. 
what what character or what would you like to do in the future, maybe Marvel related, that maybe that would be something that would intrigue you or or that you would like to do? I would love to be in the Fantastic you know, in, Four. In, in that I world, would, I would love to play Ben Grimm. Yeah, I I'd, I'd, I'd love to play the Thing. Oh, nice. Um, absolutely. Um, it is. He's a guy that I can really, really, really like connect with and really get into. Um, you know, he's a large man with complex emotions that are hard to kind of like do. Um, so, and also like that whole as- aspect of like feeling like a monster, um, you know, we all can relate to that in some way or the other. Um, and then working through that and, you know, you're not a monster and you're actually helpful and you're a hero. It's a huge arc. It's a wonderful thing, and I'd love to. I'd love to have the opportunity to play the thing. Yeah, that'd be awesome. It'd be, it'd be awesome if you were able to turn that franchise around because <laughs> they've, they've had some issues. I think it'll past. be good this time. I mean, it was, M- Marvel's been doing some really good stuff, so I have faith in they that. Are, yeah, and it's funny because when I, you know, I was, I saw that, and then I looked. I started looking like. I, you know, I, I went into Google. I said chubby Marvel characters, right? And like, like thinking, like, okay, what maybe would be something that you know Joshua can do? And it's the weird thing is, none of them, nothing popped up that's really remotely good. I think there's top ten like characters, and most of them are like girls, and and I didn't even the thing wasn't even on there. Hulk was on there. Like, apparently, Hulk is the, obviously the most the biggest, the biggest one, yeah. Wayne. Marvel character they, that they said, but like, like there's other ones like nothing popped up, and I was like, huh, well that didn't work, but it was still that pretty work. hilarious that I was looking at top ten fat superheroes is what happened, but that's what came up. Not to say that you're fat. So the so the Hulk is fat. Joshua, so they're but, they're saying that the Hulk is fat. Well, yeah, well, I don't. I mean, he looks pretty. He looks pretty. He's pretty thick. Fit to yeah, me. He's a, he's a thick boy. Yeah, he's yeah. thick. <laughs> yeah. He's a big dude. So that's why I don't know you know, Google, right? (laughs) But I went down the rabbit hole of like trying to find a character because I would I didn't think of anything. I was thinking the ones that popped up were like bad ones. Like there was the Blob. I mean, that's that's not good. I mean, he's a bad guy. Also, real stupid. Yeah. So and then and there's other ones like it was like was not good. Thanks for trying though. Yeah. Well, yeah, I was doing my best. But I like your uh, the thing would be great. I mean, that's coming, sense. they're they're in the process of making another one, or, or uh, at least it's slated, right, for a, a fantastic yeah, so or it's, something like that. So it's in the next phase, uh, phase, like, like it's at the end, end of the next phase. So I have some time to maybe do something to even, <laughs> like, have have an audition for it. Uh, so we'll, we'll, we'll see. I'm, I'm hopeful, but I'd love, I mean, e- e- even if that, you'll get it. You'll um, get it. won't work. I would love to work with them in any other capacity. Um, I, I love Marvel. I'm a huge nerd all around nerd. Like I love comic books. I love to play video games. Yeah. I can see some comic books or something. Yeah. Like I mean, you there. can't see it something right now, there, but like, like over that. here, like just out of frame, I've, I've, I've got there we go. Spider-Man. Yep, there we go. And over here, I got nice. over here I got Wolverine. I mean, this is um, the original art for the Walt Disney World ride oh. attraction. So that's Star Tours over there. That's Haunted Mansion, and that's the Carousel oh, of Progress over I didn't there. Know that was Haunted Mansion. Yeah. That's nice. You know, what I thought it was on the top. On the top there, I thought that was like the Thor. Oh yeah, to Asgard, like no, that's maybe. the haunted mansion. You know, that's how it looks that's, like to me. Or, it's that's the what it like. I thought it was the, the thing, the bridge. I thought it was the bridge it's to Earth. Rainbow Bridge, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, be, it it like, like being an entertainment that's and actor awesome. and things like that, and and um, we're talking about Marvel now. Uh, one thing I've been talking to a couple of people uh, here on, especially coming soon, is we have a um, a new Spider-Man coming. Right, uh, a new Venom. Uh, from what it sounds like, there might be some you know, intertwining with this. Uh, even though Venom really isn't, it, it he is a part of the Marvel universe, but not this one. It's a, right. Would you want to see that combination happen? Uh, and do you think if that happens, that Carnage would have to come along? 
so venom is my favorite comic book character mine ever. too um, yeah yeah so oh, wow. i love really, venom guys. i love eddie brock i, I learned love so much about both of you guys the 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 duality of those of of them and just how so basically right so with your normal anti-hero it's just one person who's like i'm gonna try some stuff that's different now with venom it's two personalities that are in a constant fight with each constant fight with each mm -hmm. and they're and it's always this goddamn struggle to do just one thing that's right and that's what life is it's 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 like mm. you're trying to move through life in a way that makes fucking sense and you're not hurting anybody but you don't always do that correctly and you never will be and he's True. they are one of they're like they're the only real characters that are like that that are trying their best but sometimes they fuck it up really badly yeah. um so i would love to see a big crossover i was pissed at at the movie because they weren't able to do the actual origin of how the Venom came to be, be because they couldn't put him on Peter Parker first and they couldn't do, do all that stuff um, they had to pull way like way way forward in the c c comic book run and bring all the other symbiote suits in and I, I enjoyed it still but I was like fuck like we're not gonna get like an origin for venom and so and we may not like tom hardy's doing a great job um and i don't i mean i wanted to play venom too until tom tom, tom hardy you know played play venom um <laughs> but um carnage is coming in the next movie uh it's woody harrelson yeah um, which i think he'll do great because so, he's just Sam. he's a lunatic to begin with i mean yeah. I, I, at least he knows how to play one i should say right <laughs> um yeah he, what i enjoyed it, I'm, I'm with you the the origin story obviously isn't the same as as how it really played out uh with tom hardy's uh version of venom uh but i did thoroughly enjoy his version of venom and i, I hope to continue with this next uh next movie that's going to be coming out because when uh they had introduced Venom in one of the, the previous Spider-Man movies, I felt like Eddie Brock wasn't Eddie Brock, if that makes sense. Like, it just it didn't uh, Yeah, it didn't in yeah, Spider-Man 3 wasn't. with the Spider-Man Spider ones? Maguire. Yeah. yeah, Topher yeah. Grace God Grace. bless his ass or whatever, <laughs> but he, you know, when it, that Venom and that Eddie Brock, it was, I mean, the whole it was just like a, it was like a splash or like a taste. It was, of, and also there were like twenty other villains. You know what I mean? Like it wasn't. Too. It's like you don't need to put like Venom and fucking Sandman, and I think it was also like Scorpion or Rhino or something. Yeah. Um, yeah and I was yeah. just like, what Sandman, the fuck yep. is Rhino. this? And then they just blow up Venom at the end, like, and I'm like, God damn it! <laughs> it's like it's like one of those basically like Game of Thrones, or like they rushed it. Like like this is the last of their three that yeah. they could have. And let's fit in all we can, get all right. the villains in, and they were just trying to make everybody happy. And then it, what happens is it ruins it, honestly. Yes. So you hopefully know? they don't ruin it. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Do, do you have a, a, a favorite series or anything that you're, you're picking up now, whether it be like Marvel or, or anything other? Like me and Scott, we're huge Rick and Morty fans. I don't know if you've seen there's like... I, I fucking love Rick and Morty. <laughs> I love the new, the, the, oh, new, yeah. the, 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 the new season is, is incredible. I mean, every single one, it just keeps getting better and better and more interesting and more interwoven. And it's such good writing. Like it's so layered mm -hmm. and fantastic and i and i've been watching behind the scenes with a lot of the writers and there's a lot of stuff where 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 they're just like we just wanted to put this in there because it's crazy and and it's like okay <laughs> but i mean it's Seems yeah about, sounds well, about it's right it's a great show and i love it very much um and i also just watched loki which was fire like mm -hmm. it was a great one of the best openers um so like each episode one of like all the new marvel shows have been really really good but this episode one was like hands down the best one 
Yeah. Really? I have to check it out. You I gotta see Loki. Yeah. I, I did. I did watch the the new. Um, oh, you Black oh, already? What'd you think of that? And that yeah, same. I thought it was pretty good. Honestly. I mean, there there was stuff you know, that it was, it was pretty good. she was doing in this film that I have never seen her do before in any of the other movies. Like, like, yeah. kind of hard, like, a little bit, or I guess. Well, no, like I mean, like actiony stuff where like she was like leaping around on exploded plane parts and like doing hand to hand combat in the air. Yeah, I'm like all right, I've never seen her do this before, but I'll just accept it. And. Because she's yeah. carrying the movie. Right. And then <laughs> so. people got really mad about uh, Taskmaster, which I kind of understand, but it worked for this film. Although I do understand what what everyone's mad about, because like that character in the comic books is insanely awesome and is in and and is always around just like messing everything up um but it's the mcu mm. what are you gonna do you know so well you you yeah. bring that up on like yeah. how they might may have you know messed that particular character up to, to kind of go back to loki and they they're introducing what could be like multiple of the same character right, right. Um, not not are you running from me? Should I? Should I'll try not. Uh, that's why I'm trying to be kind of vague with describing it. Uh, <laughs> who they're int- introducing? <laughs> there you go. But it like they have potential to kind it. of screw that up too, because there are you know multiple versions of what could really happen with everything that just happened in mm. in the series. Yeah. So, do you mean what happened in the last episode? Yeah. 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 So. I mean, take take off your headphones. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead, so go ahead. I mean, go ahead, I go think ahead. they're gonna do a really la, la, good la, job la, la, with la, la, la. with la, la. Kang the Conqueror. Yeah. Like, I don't see them not like just the way that they like set that up and what's gonna happen. I I hope like and um uh what's his name uh Jonathan Masters that his he's he's an incredible actor so he's he's gonna do an amazing job with that role. Okay, that's it. That's it. You're good. You're good, Scott. Yeah. Yeah, we're good. We're good. Yeah. We're good. I like it. That's how the jumping no, jumped and something. Very I, mean, I didn't want. I didn't, I didn't want to yeah. do the sign language, yeah. but yeah. So at least so, there's a yeah. spoiler alert, Scott. Someone jumped somewhere. Yeah, nice. someone. Jumped. Someone's jumping yeah. around buildings. Yeah. Someone's doing parkour. parkour. So Black parkour. Widow was there. Black you know, Black one, Widow was no, there. It, this really isn't like a <laughs> spoiler or anything like that. But one thing that I think that Disney should have done before they launched it. Uh, is maybe expressed uh, that the six episodes that we got like wasn't really supposed to be the season that we were supposed to get if that makes sense like it, when they started from what I've read at least uh, I could be completely wrong it, there were supposed to be 12 episodes and, oh, okay. and where they ended it you know is six in it had like like that been emphasized and 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 maybe for me at least watching it like i, I would have maybe enjoyed it a little bit more knowing right off because now thinking about it and, and getting that reveal in episode reveal in episode six and then finding out oh that's not the rest of the season there's actually mm. six more uh it, it getting me even more excited for loki just because of how good it was right cool yeah you should watch loki man Come on, Scott. You, yeah. did, did you have will, to watch will, it. I, yeah. I'll, I'll catch up. I'll catch up. We're, I, we're a bit too busy watching after. Drop the ball there. No, it's, it's good. <laughs> yes, Thank that's you. why. I was too. I was. I was too busy watching after over, over and just, over. Just watch it over and over again. For the past tell week. everybody that you know to watch it. I know. I know. Of course. When you I um, I, 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 I like it that talking much. about different movies like this. When you uh, got the the part of Frank for the Tick, uh, were you a mm-hmm. fan of the Tick uh, prior to uh, getting this role? Yes, um, I, lo- I love the tick. Nice. And, and, okay, good. And w- so, you know, it, not, try not to be biased, at least. But like, which version of the tick thus far is is like your favorite? Because we got the comic, or, or the not the well, we have the comic, but the cartoon. I watched, yeah, I watched so the cartoon. I one. came up with the animated series. And okay, that's what got got me into yeah. this. Uh, like that got me into re- 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 reading the comic books and I do love the right. Patrick War Warburton live live action show 
but at the time, be, be, because the tick is ultimately a satire of all su superheroes and 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 all comic books, they didn't have a lot to go off of in the first live live action show. It was great, but they were just making fun of other types yeah. of comedy TV that was happening at the time. Whereas with our show, we came into existence right in the middle of the MCU and like DC literally mm. exploding out of their fucking minds. <laughs> so we were able to literally pull <laughs> all these archetypes from all of everywhere that was part of the public knowledge in a way that may not have been before. Um, and yeah. so I choose personally the animated because that's what got me into it. Yeah. You but grew up with. I, I yeah. would say that my show, our show, was a very, very good one, and I was very happy to be a part of it. It was an honor. Especially where, like, our age group is, because it seems like we're about, you know, all around the same age. Um, yeah. I'm a young man, You just sir. turned 21. Yeah. You finally had had your 21, first beer. 21, I just got my first beer. <laughs> yes. Uh, but, but it, yeah, the animated series is, is just something, you know, growing up as a kid, it was a great series to just now you know have someone that's actually been on on the tick show on our show is uh, a great experience i guess you could say yeah awesome that's cool. yeah. pretty awesome i don't know yeah, why i'm no, fumbling awesome. through all my words with him we appreciate right it no no it's okay i i i, I, <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I like, he's starstruck being on the tick that's was why. really special for for me just because of what we we're just talking about but yeah i i remember when i found the animated series it was you know my childhood was really hard as we spoke about before but i i always felt weird and like and like i was other and i didn't have a place to be in the world and when i watched the animated series everybody was weird as fuck and they were <laughs> super other also but they they all loved each other e e even the bad guys loved each other um and it made me feel like i i i finally had a place in this fucking world um and then once I found all the comics and stuff, and then when I I didn't even know that I was auditioning for for the show, uh, I it like it like had like a like a like a name that wasn't the tick. Oh wow! And I went in and I was with the casting director and and uh, he was like, all right, so this is a show called The Tick. Uh, is he's like he's, he's he's like a blue guy. It's like a crazy superhero guy. And uh, she was like, do you know? Do you know this? She's never seen and, uh, it. And then I lied. I was like, I, no, I don't, I don't know what that is. <laughs> and um, <laughs> and uh, she was like, That's awesome. all right, so it's it's kind of funny, but it's not. So it used to be like absurdly funny, but now it's like much more grounded in reality. So whatever you do, just kind of don't go too far over the edge. Um, so I was like, all right, cool. So we tried it a couple of times and then she was like all right that's a great take and leave and um i left and i got in the elevator and i just started to just fucking ball crying in the elevator on the way down because i was like holy shit i just auditioned for the tick <laughs> and even if i don't get it i mean it's just incredible that i got to even try yeah. and then i booked it <laughs> um, yeah, that's and awesome. That is so that's I, crazy because they, they so they didn't even tell you and, and you didn't, had no idea until she was like, "Well, it's actually the tick." Um, that's that's nuts. Yeah, it was cool, and uh, yeah. So so, as an audition thing, do you think maybe that helped you to act like you didn't know the show? Like, do you do that now going forward? Like when you go to a I, show, like no, was, you know, I something had you to do know, it for you say like I don't it know it. Wasn't for the audition. Gotcha. Like, I had to say like no, I don't know what this is, so I can keep myself calm in the audition. Um, nice, like, yeah. And that's honestly what I did during the whole shoot too for uh, season one, uh, is because like Ben Edlin, the creator of the Tick, you know, he was on the show. He like wrote it with like a b bunch of amazing writers, and he was there every day. And I was also working with all of these actors that I had watched for my entire career and now I'm with them and I'm with them every day and I had to pretend that I didn't know who they were either or else I would have flipped the, <laughs> my fucking mind out um, so yeah. and it really wasn't until the that's awesome premiere 
and then the party after the premiere that I was like, I fucking love you. You know, like I've seen you in fucking everything, you know, like, you know, like, <laughs> you know, like, well, like, Here, sign my book, sign my, or sign my script. Or he, you know, he was fucking Rorschach in watching, you know, like he's been in oh, everything yeah. and like Peter's Harifana, which I've seen in everything. And like, just, or Brendan Hines, Valerie Curry, like just these people that I've watched and that I've respected. Now I'm acting with them. Like, um, Michael Cerverus, you know, who yeah, I've watched awesome. for forever, and he's my boss in the in in the beginning. Like, and I like he wrapped all all of his episodes, and we went out to like eat, and I was like, listen, man, I just got to tell you that like I respect you so fucking much. Like I've you know like you're like I've watched everything that you've done on TV, movies, and on fucking Broadway. I've seen every one of your shows. Like, and like he was like, oh wow, and I was like, yeah, like I've been keeping this a secret for like four months but like um, yeah that's awesome I'm gonna, I'm gonna so. have a meltdown on you right now though and like yeah, that's you know cool. everything yeah so and that's really cool yeah I really am a fan of other actors that are great too um and I've been told that I am way too optimistic and happy for being a part of this industry um and I get made fun of and people make fun of me for it a lot but um, because you're supposed to be jaded, you know, you're like supposed yeah. to not care about anything. And no, no, I, I, I think you should. I think yeah. Well, I'm going to yourself because you, you're going to you make can't that make me not. Yeah. But, um, yeah. <laughs> well, now I'm going to try. I, now that you said you that, you know, I'm a I'm a fan <laughs> of people's work too, and I yeah. love to act with them, and I love watching them work, and it's just a it's a all part of an amazing experience. So it's cool. Yeah, that reminds me of uh, we we had a guest on uh, uh, what I want to say uh, almost a year ago, uh, Bobby Del Rio. He he holds um, these clubhouse rooms uh, for you know it, doing anything in movies. Basically, he has one like every every week or every other day almost. I think. Uh, and one thing I always hear him say when when I'm just uh, you know just hanging out in some of these rooms on, on clubhouses is what you're preaching right now is uh everybody's jaded in hollywood and, and he's trying to change the the uh, atmosphere and and the mentality and and try to just you know get shit done and and be nice to each other which i, I think that's kind of what you're 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 yeah i mean look you i i understand it guys like it's such a hard industry and you get mm -hmm. rejected all the time and people are mean to you and you know, you've got to have this thick skin, and a lot of the times it comes off as this, like, aloofness where you don't give a fuck. And, but you do, you give so much of a fuck. But you feel like if you let anyone know that it's it's weakness or you lose your, yeah. your, your power or whatever. I'm too big yeah. and too... Yeah. And I have too many muscles in my body now for anyone to think that I... Well, Male no, that, model talk. Like, come on. No one can take my Stop power from me unless they stab me to death. Like, so, yeah. like, the, like, only way that, Don't. the only person that can take that from me is me. You know, like, I am happy to be here. Yeah. I worked very hard to get here. Yeah. And everybody else did Definitely. too. And they should, everybody that has should be appreciated for it. It's one of the hardest things, you know, you can Agreed. fucking do. So, right. be goddamn happy about it, goddamn it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hundred percent agree. All right, Joshua. As we grind, as we grind down to our last sure. couple questions, we do like this crazy, you know, random questions that Maybe. we throw at people. And if they get kind of crazy, just say, "Hey, these are stupid," and you don't want to answer. But hey, not I don't crazy. want to answer these. They're stupid. Um, uh, uh, all right. All see right. you later. Well, no, let's right, wrap yeah. it up, Mark. <laughs> <Go ahead>. Thanks. <laughs> later, guys. What what favorite conspiracy that you have? Is there something that you have that you think that maybe is something that's real that that is being talked about now or in the past that might be something that is really on your I mind do that have is a really legit conspiracy but it's not one that i believe in it's because i think it's so stupid so there's there's a conspiracy okay. theory that the moon isn't real have 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 you heard about this yeah. that 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 no that is new to is me actually you a might hologram have soul. Tell me. it is a artificial 
facade that has been put up um, and that we're being lied to about our moon uh, because it's either been like mined for natural resources or or it's or it's actually like an alien outpost like an observation post that is being hidden by a really sophisticated hologram or literally they they made like Hollywood flats in space that look <laughs> look like a moon and it and it's part of like the like that's smart too flat earth people's like it's like they're like off offshoot thing so Ooh, yeah. yeah those guys those guys have something too so do you think that like in the 60s you think they went up there and like you know they took the guys from Armageddon up there like all the mining rig guys and took them up there and they mine the moon completely gone, right? Or they, obviously you don't think that. Yeah, but maybe, maybe that's the moon had like a lot of nickel or Those something. Those guys went up like, there. Let's take take all that fucking nickel out yeah, of there. Yeah, they went up yeah. there, took all the moon away, <laughs> and then they came back down, and then yeah. now we just have a hologram of the moon. And then someone has to every day change the trajectory. Yeah, because they got to change. It looks. They look. gotta change so the it keeps the having the a shadow. Yeah, <laughs> to change the filter. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Yeah. No, yeah. I haven't heard that. I, but that's I, awesome. I like that one because of how. Yeah. That's I mean, I love one. flat earthers too. That's they awesome. make me so happy uh, because they're so <laughs> stupid. Yeah. Yeah. That there's but, people um, out there that think that. <laughs> um, no, I'm. I'm not really. Yeah. A, no. Like, that, yeah, I agree with guy. that. Like, I'm more of like a facts based guy. Um, so, like, it's not that I don't yeah. question things, but it's like. I'm a huge thing like you know it's it's like it's like o- 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 Occam's razor like like the most obvious thing is usually what it is um, mm-hmm. so if so if like right. some convoluted crazy shit comes like flying in my face about what a thing actually is I'm like oh okay that sounds really complicated like it seems like a lot of people that are normally s- super incompetent and can't even do their own shit are now doing all this other crazy wild shit and if it's actually bad then we're actually like seeing it like um billionaire people ruining the earth like we're like actually seeing that happen yeah uh, bezos he went up into so space bezos. in his penis yeah <laughs> so we went up there yeah he went up there with his you yeah. his his penis rocket and no he... and, and didn't see the moon he waved at his, his yeah. condo. I'm, I'm like that too. Like I, I enjoy conspiracies. I like the argument, so I, I want to hear both sides of it, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, but y- y- you also have to be logical. But sometimes they can, y- you know, someone that is for or not for a conspiracy can really make a good, compelling argument. Sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'll yeah. check them out. You know, like I'm not. You know, I like to hear what's <laughs> what's going on, but I'm not gonna yeah. like write a manifesto about like why the Which is... Earth's actually hollow or something no, like that. that. That's what the flat earthers are for. But at yeah. least you'll you'll entertain it to listen and be like, oh, okay, okay. <laughs> thank you for your thoughts. The awesome the awesome thing about the awesome thing about this like these questions that we ask like we've had like. The flat Earth kind of questions and like is, is, oh is God, Australia real kind of thing, and and yeah, people come to us or that th- they brought up like, no, you're yeah. asking the wrong question. Like it's really Antarctica is not real. Oh, wow. And like, wait a minute, what? So like, oh, and then we drop in this whole other thing of like, wait a minute, we haven't heard this one, and like, just you just said the moon isn't real. Like, wow, I didn't know yeah, that. That's watch awesome. An hour long YouTube. Video so yeah, about just it a whole bunch wanna, of. If you want to check it out. Yeah, the moon thing. Of the moon? I have to check that out. I have to see if I deny it or not. You got some guy named Jim. He's the one that's controlling the projector. And one night he accidentally just put the Death Star on there. Yeah, it's like, oh, shit. Uh, shit. Well, that's, that's, a, you, that's know, you know what that's, that's called? That's called that's an eclipse. no moon. <laughs> the night that he has a day off. The, the week, yeah. <laughs> his yeah. off weeks or weekends or whatever. Hey, is, we're is getting another an super moon out. So. Yeah. <laughs> I need to go on vac- vacation with my family. Yeah. He has vacation days. <laughs> All right. Well, cir- yeah. circle on the calendar. These are the full moons. I don't have time. To... Uh, what? What life hack or something that you know that you um, that maybe you have? There, what like what what? Damn it! I said this wrong. Is there a life hack or something that you do that people don't know 
Oh no, I learned learned the thing about cans recently. Upside down or something? Can openers. I don't know if you guys know this, but I learned learned this about a year ago. So you know how when when you use a can opener, you like put it on, you like crunch it into the side and then you twist it? So that's not how you're supposed to open a can. You you take the can opener and and you put it on top of the can. So like, let's, let's say that this is... This is the can top, right? So you would normally put it on yeah. the side. No, you lay okay. it flat on top, crunch it yep. in, and it perfectly takes off the top of the can, and oh, there's no the outside sharp of it. edges. It just pops the top of the can off. And that's oh, apparently how you're supposed to wow. use a can opener. But no one taught us that because be, because the Nobody movie's did. real. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's connected, Joshua. You're, yeah. you're you are connecting dots that right. we weren't even expecting tonight. Well, that's the life. I was, life today life. Lear- I was today years old when I learned that. Thank you, though. That that is something I did not no, know at all. You should try it when we're done. Like just like open up a can of beans or whatever. You'll fucking shit your pants. Like it's <laughs> like <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. And our last question: Would you take a one-way trip? Or, yeah, no, we'll say one-way trip. Oh, one-way well, trip to Mars. One-way trip to Mars. That would be... I know it's... The reason why I was kind of backpilling there, because I know you just had a kid. So then you kind of think that whole, like, oh, no, my kid's here. I guess a you could one. maybe... <laughs> just, plus one. Just... <laughs> so then you have to decide. Now you have to um, decide. I don't want to... I don't want to bring, bring my wife. Um, plus one. I am not a scientist, <laughs> so going to Mars would... Okay. All right, well, so the moon is real. Uh, um, going to Mars on a one-way trip to just, like, look for... I'm assuming that I'm part of the, like, looking for how to live their ex- expedition. I yeah, have no like the, applicable the skills for Tesla. that mission. Um, I mean, I could, like... So you're the perfect person. Yeah. <laughs> I could, like, maybe, like, do one man shows on the spaceship for the whole whole time that I was there but like actually on Mars trying to like find water and like trying to like find the right like lava tube to like make a fucking colony in I don't know if that would be a thing but I like I I know a lot about what they want to do but you know I don't like I'm not that great at math so I don't think I would be great on a spaceship you know They'd be like, what's our angle? Like, are we going to crash into the sun? I'd be like, I don't know, probably. We're on a, we're doing this. I don't know, you know, spinning around. Uh, so you no, no, I, land, right? I would not. <laughs> is the short. <laughs> so, so you're saying based on being non-helpful, you would stay back. Well, and yeah, like, I mean, I'm also not, a, to go I, I haven't yeah, no, spent I get my life training to be an astronaut, which is, also one of the like shitty things about these other people going into space is yeah we did yeah. we just found out that four people yeah. can go up one of them had training i yeah. think but it's like the other three did these not these people have been training for their literal and... lives to like operate one of the most complex pieces of fucking machinery that go into space and then some <laughs> dudes are, are like I made money exploiting people I'm gonna shoot my whole asshole up into space and throw ping pong balls at each, at each other it's like cool cool um, so uh, no um, I would go later <laughs> when um, when I could come back and not just like die of starvation on the f- <laughs> fucking bars yeah Awesome. So and vacation, yes. <laughs> Stowaway, no. <laughs> yeah. Pioneer, no. Big, big vacation, yes. Yeah. Vacationer, nice. Uh, Very well, cool. that that is uh, that that concludes the show. Oh, um, perfect ending. We, uh, <laughs> Yeah, I know, right? Perfect ending to everything. Uh, is there anything that you want to promote? Uh, we obviously talked about the shows that you're on. Uh, if you have any other projects that are coming up or social medias that you want to plug. Sure. Uh, and then we'll, we'll end it. Sure. So um, you can find most of my stuff on joshwishubart.com. And on Twitter and Instagram, I am at josh underscore shubart. Uh, I do a lot of tweeting about stuff, so anything new coming out, you will that will be on Twitter. Instagram is just a bunch of me being weird and taking pictures and stuff. <laughs> um, so if you're into that, you can 
just check me out on both. It'll be a great time. Um, and uh, yeah, nothing that I can talk about coming up on the horizon. Un unfortunately, I wish I could the talk about it. Gotcha. Yeah. So they'll be like, listen, Mars, you have Mars no applicable skills in general. You should go to Mars, but we need you. But we need you. We need you to Joshua, hold we this need you on Mars. Beam. <laughs> what do you need me to do? Just hold these. You need you to hold these potato plants together. so that they don't get the whole time. cold. Yeah, <laughs> so jo Matt Damon can keep making more. Someone potato needs plants. to be the poop guy. Yeah, somebody. <laughs> Grow the, to grow the Everybody potato. needs to be a poop guy. So, sanitation everywhere you can. Yeah, I'm really good anywhere you go, there's so going to be, be a sanitation great. guy. Yeah. So, not to say that. Yeah, nice. That's the perfect ending right yeah, there. Yeah, and <laughs> that's the show. <laughs> Amigos <laughs> and out. This has been the Amigos PC. Make sure to like, subscribe, and review us on all your podcasting platforms. And visit us at AmigosPC.net. Get our entire library of content and Amigos merch. Till next time. Adios.